good morning, Slush, and welcome to the decentralized future of health. I am so honored to open up our healthcare segment today. I bring you greetings from Silicon Valley, which is the home of Health 2.0. And Health 2.0, as mentioned, is a healthcare technology conference and community. And much like our friends at Slush, we believe in the power of entrepreneurship and innovation to make a difference not just in health and healthcare, but in the world at large. Uh, this past spring, we joined forces with HIMSS, which is the largest health IT association in America. And it is really wonderful to be bringing together now the digital health ecosystem, which began with the goal of empowering consumers with technology, now coming together with the leading voice for health information and technology for health systems and hospitals. And so together, we're poised to really transform the industry together with all of you. So this is a supply and demand curve. And when things work well, these curves respond to each other in real time, very naturally. But in healthcare, we have a supply and demand problem. Healthcare, supply and demand are incredibly mismatched. For example, on the demand side, we are getting older. Uh, in the United States now, 47.8 million people are over the age of 65 in, in 2015. That number is expected to double to 88 million by the time we get to 2050. This growth of this aging population is responsible for 81% of the increase in demand in primary care services through 2020. So that's on the demand side. But on the supply side, the healthcare workforce is tapped out. We have rising rates of physician burnout. 40% of physicians reported feeling burnt out in 2013, and that's up to 51% in 2017. In addition, there's a huge generation of physicians expected to retire, leading to a shortage of about 104,000 physicians by 2030 in the US alone. Demand number two, consumers want their data. This is a photograph of Regina Holiday's walking gallery, a set of jackets that are designed to demonstrate the movement in the United States around patient access to health records. However, on the supply side, data is still siloed. In the United States, at least, um, health data in health systems is extremely enterprise-centric, and portability of data is still a massive issue. Supply side, over 318,000 digital health apps, uh, and I believe 150,000 have been added just since 2015. $9 billion in funding as of today in 2017 alone, but only 2% are connected to the medical record, to the underlying medical record. So we have a demand issue there and a supply mismatch. So how do we fix this? And I think one of the ways we fix this problem of supply and demand being mismatched in healthcare is to imagine and leverage and prepare for a decentralized future in health. So what do we mean by that? Well, in my mind, I picture the decentralized future of health looking more like a cell membrane. Now, a cell membrane exists within living systems. This is the opposite of a metaphor from silos that are static. In a cell membrane, uh, you have continually moving information. Uh, this is about responding to our actions in real time. Cell membranes are a distributed, interconnected set of services, if you will, responding to our actions. They communicate across all of the environments we inhabit. And that's the vision for the future of a decentralized system in healthcare. And there are five drivers of this future. And the first is the new interoperability. We need the mechanics to enable this future. And the first building block of those mechanics is fire. Think of fire as an internet protocol on top of the medical record that allows for third-party applications to effectively connect with that data in very, very easy ways. Smart on Fire is a related web utility that allows developers to build once and deploy everywhere across the systems uh, of healthcare. And they also allow clinicians to work with new health applications without disrupting their workflow to be using the same browser. Over 35 hospitals in the United States have, explo have exposed their Fire APIs, welcoming the developer community, welcoming this, this innovation. The second building block is blockchain. I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot about it today, and you might know a lot about it already. But in healthcare, this has profound implications. Think of now when power goes to the extremes and the outside of networks, where you can have trustless in transactions that affect how we can affirm identities, move health data around more cheaply and more quickly, and have better ways of enabling payments and processing claims. OK, so second driver. Novel modalities and analytics. 
With all of this access to data, we now have information that exceeds the human's ability to process it. And that's why you've heard a lot about machine learning and AI and healthcare. But it's not just analytics. This is Siri, Google Home, um, and Alexa. They're using voice artificial intelligence, but notice there's also form factor innovation because we have to interact with this new data and communicate around it in new ways. And so we're seeing those new modalities come together. So while Google Home is now allowing patients to make appointments and connect to their medical record just through their voice, it's also being used in hospital settings. Imagine what's possible now when apps and, and devices like that can connect using fire to the underlying medical record. This is my son, Nikolai, using virtual reality goggles for entertainment. But again, in healthcare, uh, profound implications. This is Microsoft's HoloLens, which is allowing medical students to study anatomy without using actual cadavers. It can all be done virtually now. This is a company called Suggestic. And Suggestic launched at Health 2.0 just this past October. It's an augmented reality application allowing you to go through the stores and connect with food uh, and products that match your dietary restrictions in real time. Just last month, the FDA approved the first pill that has a digitally ingestible tracking system. I mean, this is the next level of digital therapeutics and will allow for the monitoring of whether medications were taken. Whether you like it or not, that is now uh, these, the, the power of these new modalities. And the question I would ask you is, once these new modalities have found a foothold in healthcare environments, will data, services, and transactions follow? Third driver of the decentralized future of health, new market entrance. What counts as a healthcare company in the future might not be what you think. Uh, this is Amazon getting into the pharmacy business, and already large um, pharmacy chains, brick and mortar chains like CVS in the US, are preparing to add next day delivery as the threat of this competition looms. Verily, Google's life sciences arm has come out with a number of new products. Uh, this is the Liftware, which allows patients with tremors to be able to eat more easily, and they have their glucose monitoring patch. Apple has been hiring up like crazy, and you could imagine how they're going to change the face of patient decision making. And Facebook, a platform now for recruiting for clinical trials. So new market entrance. While that's happening, the actual business model of healthcare technology companies is changing and being disrupted in really interesting ways. So if you think about it, technology originally was a mechanism and a tool. Software was what care delivery organizations used to deploy services and extend their efforts. But now we're sort of moving backwards. Technology companies have the power to go beyond just being software. They can add services, and they can add care delivery mechanisms of their own and become new types of care delivery models themselves. So an example of that is Livongo, which is a diabetic glucometer connected digitally to data while having an access to human coaches. That's now a new care delivery model. It's not just software. Uh, this is able to, doing the same kind of connection between platforms and human beings uh, in behavioral health. This is Grand Rounds, allowing patients to navigate the system using data and platforms to identify the best doctors. Um, it's a service, it's people, it's power of the connectivity of all of those things. The fifth driver of a decentralized future is that health happens everywhere. And it's the recognition that health happens in all parts of our lives, not just in traditional clinical settings. And now health systems are beginning to really recognize the power of investing and partnering outside of their walls. In schools, this is a, a company called CareDocs that's providing a clinical medical record for school nurses' offices so you can track uh, children's health data. In the workplace, companies like Performmetrics that are tracking mental fatigue and employees to improve productivity. In libraries that are serving as access points for enrolling people in healthcare services, they need technology to aggregate those services at those points of care. Transportation, Uber Health pass, uh, Uber pass partnered with Passport Health to deliver flu shots in over 20 cities in the United States this past year. So if you acknowledge that health happens everywhere, you have to tackle all of health, health's problems, including the really tough ones. And that's where we came up with the concept of the unacceptables. And this is where we're talking about the real decentralization and the future of health. 
there are many issues that go beyond you know, what are traditionally discussed in healthcare environments. And we've shown a light on these health disparities at Health 2.0 this past year, not just on the giant problems we have uh, in health, but also on the role of entrepreneurs and how technologies could make a difference. So these are some of the ones we identified, the really tough problems that are requiring us to, to, to no longer accept where we can do better. And I was inspired by this quote by Tony Robbins, we get what we tolerate. So as entrepreneurs, I challenge you. I'm going to show you just a few examples of what we're calling the unacceptables in health and healthcare, where technology can make a difference. What can you do? The first one is loneliness. This is an epidemic uh, in the United States, at least, and I think it's growing worldwide. 25% of 70-year-olds and above report feeling lonely. That number is almost double for younger people. This is something that people don't realize. 45 to 49-year-olds are feeling lonely uh, in, in America. This is LEQ, it's um, an active aging companion that helps elders engage and stay connected with their family. It's one example of how we can make a difference with technology. Violence, one in five women in America experiences sexual assault on college campuses, and this is unacceptable. Uh, we showed a company called Callisto, which is a platform that allows women and all survivors of sexual violence to report perpetrators in an anonymous way. It's being used and deployed across universities in America, leading to much, much better results um, for people going through this. Addiction has been in the news a lot, at least in the US, with over 20 million um, adults in America reporting substance use disorders. 12.5 million reporting misusing prescription medications alone. And companies like Accendo Wave are using virtual reality to now be a clinically validated opioid alternative. They're reducing pain scores dramatically in inpatient settings, and we can only imagine what that would be like if it went out into the community, out into the mobile environment. So those are some of the unacceptables, and I hope that I've given you a sense of the giant problems we have, but also shown you ways that entrepreneurs are making a difference. So I leave you with two questions as we look at the decentralized future of health. One is, how will we define value in this new world order? What does value mean and how do we measure it? And number two, what is your job? Uh, as you think of rising consumer expectations, innovation and technology, and disruption in traditional business models, what will your role be, your organization's role, and the role of the innovations that you come up with? So thank you so much, and welcome to the decentralized future of health.